Greetings hobbyists, this is Arsans of All, and in this second video on Mesh Machine we're going to have a look at how it can help us working with booleans and the select functions that it offers. So I've put these in the same video because most of the select functions are going to relate pretty directly to using booleans and they're quite essential when you're trying to use some of the other boolean options like the boolean cleanup. They also just generally make life easier for a variety of reasons. So let's start with two boolean objects here and we've got a quad sphere here which we've booleaned into a cylinder. Let's just shade that flat so we can see this nice and clearly. So quite a lot of the time we're going to want to do things where you might want to select this edge and normally if this was with native blender you'd hold down alt and click this edge and it won't work because it's getting confused about what the direction of this loop is. So Mesh Machine solves this really nicely by what we can do is just click an edge Y for the Mesh Machine menu select and then we can do L select which stands for loop select and that will select our loop allowing us to do things with this like bevel it and chamfer it and whatever else we might want to do so that's L select now there are points that this won't work sometimes and let's try and manufacture one of these it's not actually that easy to do because this generally works really well so I'm going to bring up a quad sphere and then let's bring in a cube as well let's bring that over here and then let's scale that down and let's try and do the same thing Thing. Inevitably this will probably work because that's sort of the way isn't it when you're trying to create problems It's like when you've got an issue with your computer and you go to the IT department and then it works So let's go to edge mode and we're going to use loop select again Now there is another way of using this which is quicker What you can do is you can click on an edge then once you've clicked on the edge Hold down alt and then click again and it will activate loop select and excellent this hasn't worked. I say excellent for demonstration purposes This could be really annoying if you're trying to do this in real life so what we've got is an alternative to this, which is S select, and that stands for sharp select. So what we're gonna have to do is convert this into a sharp edge so we can select it nice and quickly. Now, just to be clear, in this instance, it probably would be quicker just to control click all the way around, but there are instances where that wouldn't be true. So let's have a look at how we'd do this. So what I'll do is go to select, select sharp edges and then what I'd probably do is unselect the ones that I'm not interested in so I don't want these to be part of that or that one there and then I'm going to go to edge and then mark sharp and for me that turns it yellow because I've set it up that way but now if I click on an edge and click Y and go to select you can see that the S select is now available and it selects all of those connected sharp edges. Now the other thing that's really clever about this is if I click and then alt click what would have done loop select now recognizes that there's something else to do and does sharp select instead and you can click on it to change over in case it's doing it the wrong way. So I love this I think that's absolutely fantastic. Now there are other utilities to this let's just select and then select sharp edges again and then edge and then mark sharp so now we've got all of them selected because these are all joined together, we can select and then alt click and we'll get all of them selected as well. So this is just quite a nice way of speeding up your selection options. Now, the final type of selection is called V select and that selects a vertex group. Now, if you don't know much about vertex groups, they are something that you can assign to a specific set of vertices. We'll have a look at that in a second, but where you're probably gonna use this if you're using mesh machine is if you're in object mode, and you click Y, you get a plug library. And there are extra plugs and funky things that you can do. So for example, let's just take, I don't know, this kind of funky inset there. So what I'm gonna do is S to scale that down and then you can G and then hold control to move it around and it'll snap to the faces. So let's do something like there and you can R if you want to rotate it and do note that the Z axis always points out so you can rotate it perfectly on it's facing and then what you do is you select this outer edge not the object I'm not really going to talk about plugs but they are quite interesting if you do want a video on that let me know and I could probably think about something I could do that's not in the documentation for mesh machine so we're going to select the outer object shift select there Y and then click plug and then it plugs it into the geometry lovely and you can see that this conforms to this shape so this is really nice. Now there are other options that you can do here, but none of this is really required for this. But if I go into face mode, you can see that we've got all of these bits that are part of this and Mesh Machine makes this part of a vertex group automatically. So if I click there and then click Y and then select and then V select, it will select all of those bits, which are the parts that we've modified 
and changed by adding in this plug. So V select selects a vertex group. There is one other thing that you probably need to know that this does. Let's just bring in a cube because this is quite nice. So if I go into edge mode A and then control and E and then subdivide those, let's subdivide it a couple of times. Let's go there and then vertex mode. If I select these and then make this into a vertex group. So to do that, we come to data, we plus to make a vertex group and then we can call this, let's call it Y pause because it's on the positive Y side and then click assign. I always deselect and then select to check that it's working. And then I'm going to come here and then select the other side. And then we're gonna plus, we're gonna call this Y neg because it's on the negative side of the Y axis. Assign, deselect, select, and we know it's working. So what vselect will do is notice we've got this one here, which is those. And then if we deselect that, we've got this one here, which does those. Notice there's an overlap. So at this point, if I go into face mode and then let's say select this face, I can click Y, select, and then V select, and it's going to select one of our sets of faces. And you'll notice I have the choice. At the top of my menu here, it's saying that there are two groups that this face is part of, and then I can scroll up or down to say I want it to be the Y positive or the Y negative. So for example, if I want the Y negative, I can click there. I think you have to click S, to select all of the points and then click and we've now selected everything in that vertex group or I could Y and then select and then V select and I want the positive and click and we've got all of those selected. So really useful options there for selecting. Right, let's come back over here and we'll go through some of our Boolean tools as well. So let's bring in a sphere, it could be any sphere and then let's scale that up a bit and then let's mesh and bring in a cube and then let's do a similar thing so I'm just going to scale that down and scale it on the z-axis and then let's maybe a bit more and then let's control and minus that so we've got a difference so we've got this here and let's apply that so what we're going to do is we're going to chamfer these edges so I'm going to go into edge mode click alt click no we've got the same issue so select select sharp edges I don't want that one selected that one selected that one selected or that one selected and then edge and then mark sharp so now I can do that really easily and then we're going to Y and we're going to chamfer it and what I can do then is chamfer these edges now first thing why is this different to just chamfering normally? Well, let's control and B and I can chamfer here and well, it looks basically the same. So what the hell is this doing? Well, firstly, let's go to chamfer and move apart and you'll notice that we've got one edge that is more white than the other and I can scroll up and down to change that. Now what's great about this is I can change for each one if I want these different methods being done on it. So you don't apply everything to all of the new edges that are being created, which is really handy. For example, I can turn loop slide on, so Q on this one, which means if you notice here, it's slightly distorting those edges. Look at this edge here, it slightly distorts it. Whereas if I press Q, it keeps it perfectly straight, but I don't want this top one having this working on it. In fact, actually, I probably could have it, but I want this to be flat edge. So you can select each one individually, which is great. The other thing that this does, which is very powerful, is that we can change how this is going to deal with the faces that are overlapping. You can see here that we're getting these overlapping faces, which aren't very nice. So at the moment, we don't have anything going on. It's not trying to deal with this perimeter until we press M. And at this point, it is now trying to sort this all out for us. And we can press control and scroll up and tell it to not do this or to replace things, which isn't gonna work here, or I can rebuild. So if I come to replace, you'll notice this now looks like it's not working, but it has another thing that we can do, which is if I press Alt and scroll up, it now goes further. So you can basically control how far it goes each time. And here's not gonna work, but this next one will. So I could do that if I wanted to go relatively far. Now, this doesn't always work perfectly. You can see there's a little bit of a mess up here. So for example, that vertex and that vertex would need combining together, which is why I probably wouldn't use that anymore. So let's have a look at the alternative. Now that alternative is something we need to activate. So I'm gonna to go to edit preferences and find mesh machine. 
click down to open up our options and scroll all the way to the bottom where it's got this experimental and I've got that true click. That doesn't automatically start click, so make sure you click that and then you're gonna to need to save your preferences. Now what this will allow you to do, and this is really cool, is you can do the offset cut. An offset cut, well, it does this basically. It means that you can change your width of where you're gonna offset which is really cool and it will do it on both sides. You can also change how many edges this will have to it. Now notice that this is gonna have a slight problem. I can actually get it to here and it's pretty good, but it will have a slight issue because it's trying to do it with something with a sharp edge. So if you click resample and turn that off, this will now solve that problem. So that's why the resample option is there. Most of the time, if you've got something that doesn't have pointed edges to it, I'll show you an example in a second, you'll want to have that. Now, do note this is experimental, so it does get to the point where it might have issues. Uh, normally, having the resample on will solve those issues, but then you've got the problems that you've got with those corners. So you sort of have some decisions to make there. You can also change how this is optimized and the angle and things like that. Now, let's have a look at a different example of this and we'll do something more with it. Oh, just so we know, this is really important because it means that we can now do something like that chamfer that we wanted to do there. Now, let's have a look at this in this more complicated setting and see how cool this is. So click, oh, click, Y, offset, cut. Let's turn the resample back on because we won't like it without it. And you can change your factor. So I'm going to bring this down so it's generally, and this is just a personal preference, I try to get it so that these sections here are relatively similar thickness. So there is relatively similar thickness to there. It's not a requirement, but I just find it useful. And then once you've done that, we can control and B, and then let's scroll that up. Let's C to apply a clamp, and you can see we get this really cool shape that just wouldn't be possible without Mesh Machine. So really funky. Now if I quickly undo that, you also have, once we've got this selected, the Y and we have an offset function which just does this on one side and you can scroll up or down to say which side you want to do it on and notice it does have a loop slide option so I can cue that off but that will probably cause problems. So do note that is going to affect your geometry. So there is an offset function as well where you'll just do one side. Now the final thing that I will mention which is very useful for Boolean cleanup but I'm not going to really use it in that instance here and that is the symmetrize function. This is not really to do with Booleans I guess but I actually found it really useful because if you're doing some manual cleanup you can just copy everything over to the other side and this is a bit different. So if I alt X in object mode you can see that well I've got hard ops so I get this mirror gizmo and I can do this this way but this is adding a modifier. Now if you go into any of the edit modes and I do the same and click Alt X, you can see we get a tool called Symmetrize, which is part of Mesh Machine. And if I then drag this, it will do exactly the same thing, except this has actually done it without a modifier. This has done it to the geometry. So this geometry actually exists which is quite useful for things like Boolean cleanup because you can fix something on one side and then symmetrize it over to the other. So there we go, a quick look at the tools useful for manipulating Booleans, including those select tools. As always, if you found this video useful, please do hit that like button. And if you want to support the channel further, there is a Patreon page where for a few dollars a month, you get these videos a week earlier and ad free. And if you select one of the higher tiers, you get some funky things like STL models. Have a great day, guys.